Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films, my name is Alan. While fans and critics were battling each other over how awesome or terrible Star Wars The Last Jedi was, Disney quietly, or if you're an investor, loudly and boldly made an offer to add another gigantic chunk to their already impressive media galactic empire by merging with 21st Century Fox for an estimated $52 billion. Now it's yet to be determined if government regulators will block the deal because of antitrust monopoly regulations, but should Disney and 21st Century Fox go through the merger, it will shrink the already small field of media mega conglomerates in the United States from six to five. Now this is a huge deal and perhaps a bit confusing for those who aren't really following this story so let me visualize it and simplify it for you guys by using Star Wars because it's basically like the only thing I truly understand. So this is the Star Wars galaxy. As a whole, it makes up the media landscape of America. Competing for power are six large factions. Let's go through them. In the mid rim, we have Comcast. They're the largest media organization in the world. With a reported revenue of $80.4 billion, they own big names like Universal and NBC, and they're also the largest service provider in the galaxy of America. In the galaxy of America. When the mid-rim worlds of Comcast attempted to take over Hut Space or Time Warner, they were blocked by government Jedi regulators. While Time Warner is one of the smaller mega conglomerates on our list, they still bought in about $28.1 billion in annual revenue. They own assets like Warner Brothers Studios, DC, and CNN. But more importantly, Time Warner Cable is the second largest service provider in the galaxy of America. Allowing the mid-rim Comcast empire and the hut space cartel of Time Warner to join forces would create a monopoly over trade routes in the entire galaxy. And by trade routes, I mean internet and cable service. Now, in the core of the galaxy, we have the Disney empire. They are the second largest media mega conglomerate in the galaxy of America, with an annual revenue of $55.1 billion. They might not be the largest empire in town, but they have some of the highest quality franchises and, in a way, own the soul and children of the galaxy. Galaxy. They have brands like Lucasfilms, ESPN, Marvel, ABC, and Disney theme parks. As we mentioned in the intro, the core world empires of Disney are attempting to link up with a faction in the unknown region known as the 21st Century Fox Order. A shadow of its former glory, the 21st Order used to be a part of a larger galactic empire called News Corporation, headed by the widely misunderstood Darth Murdoch. It decided to split from the old order to form a more streamlined and efficient organization. The 21st Century Fox order owns a lineup of Fox products like FX, Fox Sports, and 20th Century Fox. If the Disney Empire is able to link up with the 21st Century Fox order, together they could rival the Comcast Empire in size, and will also own some of the best films in the entire universe. That is, again, if the Jedi regulators allow it to happen. Now, in the outer rim, pretty much forgotten by everyone else, is the National Amusements Alliance. They're the smallest mega conglomerates, bringing in $13.8 billion a year. They hold properties like CBS, Viacom, and Paramount. And then there's the extra galactic species known as the Sony Yuzang Vong over in the galaxy called Japan. Despite being in another galaxy, they still have a tremendous influence over our local galaxy. With an annual revenue of $65.7 billion, they are the second largest media conglomerate in the universe, or world, or, or Earth. I don't even know anymore. When they're not getting hacked by the North Koreans, Sony owns brands like Sony Movies, Sony TV, and Sony PlayStation. Together, these six empires, federations, alliances own about 90% of all media in the United States. In 1983, or the Old Republic era, there were 50 companies owning that same share of media. So why is this important? Should you be worried? Well, it's not exactly a black and white issue. Just like how the Galactic Empire wasn't truly evil, but at the same time, definitely not good. There's positives and negatives on both sides. Having a consolidated industry theoretically means that the available resources can be used in a more efficient manner, which will lower operation and manufacturing costs. Whether or not those savings are passed on to the individual consumer is a whole nother question. It's very possible a galactic empire could use all those savings and take on more ambitious projects, which end up just failing and wasting a lot of money. Or they could really benefit the galaxy, who knows? So, in a galactic empire, you might have more polished entertainment and even cheaper entertainment, but you'll have less choice. If you look at the building I live in, I only have two options for service, and that's Verizon and Comcast. They're both scumbags, basically, and I have to choose one of them. 
Comcast and Verizon have a duopoly in my area where they both essentially have teamed up on pricing. Without competition, organizations spend less money on innovation and they're not pushed to provide us with better goods and services. Instead, they give you cheap crap that just barely does the job so you don't start a rebellion. Take a look at your cable box, for instance. It's like an AT-AT. -AT. The design hasn't been changed since the late 90s, and even when it's turned off, it's one of the most power-consuming items in your house. It just doesn't make sense. And that, again, is because the cable companies control the distribution of cable boxes. There are no third-party vendors. And this kind of consolidation is happening in every industry. Those same problems I discussed about Verizon and Comcast are appearing all over the place. But it's not always bad. Amazon, through consolidating essentially all retail in the United States, provides extremely competitive priced goods for consumers. And because it has so much traffic, it even has developed its own network of shipping, which is oftentimes faster and much cheaper than traditional shipping companies. Brick and mortar stores are on a decline. It's a segment of the market most analysts think will never recover its former glory. This is also because Amazon is artificially lowering their prices to destroy the competition. The worry is, what if one day Amazon destroys all of its retail competitors and then suddenly raises prices so that it could fund Jeff Bezos' army of killer delivery drones that will hold your children hostage until you fill your monthly quota in Amazon purchases? Just joking, I'm just being hysterical. That most likely won't happen, but please don't for one second trust individuals like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Zuckerberg, and so on. To get to where they are, you have to be a psychopath. Empires are built on the bones and dismembered body parts of their competitors. And you'd be surprised what separates the ordinary person like you or me from these CEOs. It's not intellect, it's not skill, it's not even luck. It's just that they have a killer instinct and lack of empathy that would make a Sith Lord <laughs> his pants. These guys have more in common with Charles Manson than Einstein. So who protects us from these big bad companies run by psychopaths? Well, it's the Jedi regulators, but like any organization, they are corruptible and could become too powerful and limit the growth of our economy. But at the same time, they could be neutralized by lobbyists or some type of Order 66 mandate. The second, perhaps more natural way of resisting these conglomerates is for the consumers to band together in an alliance of rebels or a rebel alliance. I mean, it's happened before. Just look at the gaming industry recently. Several large developers like EA and Ubisoft have faced growing scrutiny and decreasing stock prices because of their exploitation of gamers. So you can make a difference by standing up for your consumer rights and boycotting the companies you think are run by scumbags. Well guys, the only question I have left is, what is Generation Films in all of this? I just don't know, because I ran out of Star Wars metaphors. But from their actions alone, I'm guessing American Ben is a moisture farmer, which is why he always looks like he's wet, and British Ben is an Imperial, obviously. Well guys, thanks for joining us today. My name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie, and you are the protagonist.